So you don't have to just worry about the narcissist, you also have to worry about their minions. Let's get into that. I'm your guy Frank, let's uh, press that like button, let's press the subscribe button because this is the stuff we want to hear about. And let's get, and this is a great video, and I'm a great person. <laughs> hey, I'm a narcissist. No, I'm not a narcissist. <laughs> I'm, I'm a survivor of a narcissist. So what are these minions? What are these minions? Well, we have a term for it. It's called flying monkeys. And yeah, it's a derisive term to explain people that will do the narcissist bidding. Usually, you leave the narcissist and the narcissist wants to get you back, or at least um, stop you from ruining the narcissist's narrative. And they'll use other people. They'll use like your family, your friends, coworkers, neighbors, anybody with a connection between a narcissist and you. And they will give them this rosy picture of how they are the actual victim and you are the abuser. You are the wrong party and you need to be righted by these flying monkeys into your sanity and come back to the narcissist. That you're, that everything you saw and everything you experienced and everything you felt, you didn't see, you didn't know, you didn't feel, you didn't experience. So you need to come back to the narcissist. You see? <laughs> it's like an extended second party gaslighting campaign. I call it a propaganda cam campaign, a propaganda campaign, a propaganda campaign <laughs> to get you back. And that's what it is. They're, so they'll, they'll call these people in close. They'll tell them uh, whatever they have to say, whatever the narcissist has to say to appear like the victim and that you or the victim is the abuser, the wrong person. So what kind of people would be flying monkeys for a narcissist? Well, they could just be just about anybody. Um, a lot of people don't know that narcissist is a thing. And even if they do, they probably don't know the signs. They don't see all these videos. These are tremendously important videos. These, uh, and not just mine, everybody's about this subject because we're educating ourselves for a very dangerous and destructive personality disorder. And these, a lot of people just don't know. Now these people could be extremely naive people. These people can be um, the people that refuse to see any negativity in anybody. So they see the negativity in the narcissist, but they're like, no, 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 they're a good person. I'm gonna do their bidding. Or they could just be people that like the drama that the narcissist brings. They just like that drama. And there's a lot of sycophants around the drama, uh, around the narcissist sometimes too. Sycophants are people that like to suck up to other people so they can get some kind of uh, passed down glory. Like if you're around the par power, you're kind of powerful by association. Uh, and so they could be these types of people. but. Hey, they don't have to be. If they have a connection, if the narcissist has a connection, no, if there's a connection between the narcissist, this person, and you, if there's that bridge, the narcissist would probably try and use that person. Now, a lot of times the narcissist will um, try and weave their propaganda campaign to a lot of these people. They'll do it over Facebook, they'll do it over the phone, they'll do it in person about how you left them and how you're wrong and how they you need to come back or be at least under their control to some degree. And they'll send these people out to warp your perceptions about what happened, to gaslight you so that you will be confused as to what really happened and what you really feel, which is probably anger and rage at the narcissist, to, to to reel that back, to disassociate you with your true emotions and feelings. And then they can, the narcissist can get your hooks back in, their hooks back in you and reel you back in. That's the game that they're playing. And a lot of people don't know that this game is even out there. The flying monkeys usually don't know it and the victims usually don't know it. So yeah, we have to get this word out to the masses. My videos are Creative Commons license, so you can cut these up 
Splice these up, put them on TikTok, put them on YouTube or wherever you can put them out there. It is completely acceptable because we have to get the message out. It's not about me. It's about the message. So yeah, the narcissist can use your friends and your coworkers and your neighbors and people on Facebook and all kinds of connections to get to you. And this can be very traumatizing for the victim because sometimes you'll establish a friendship group, you establish some, some friends, say from a college, right? And you'll have these friends for years or decades. And then a narcissist comes, you marry the narcissist and they come into the picture, let's say that happens. And now they're all friends, you're all friends, your friend and the narcissist's friends and you've got the group of your college friends and your buddies. Now the narcissist contacts all those people behind your back and turns them against you to come at you for the narcissist bidding. To basically betray you because they will come to you and tell you that you're wrong. And now all your friends are against you. Friends that you've had way longer than you even knew the narcissist. And this really screws up people's feelings, minds, and they, the feelings of anger and betrayal are off the charts. And the narcissist doesn't care. So if you're possibly one of the flying monkeys or you're about to be the victim or you have been the victim of a narcissist flying monkey attack, this is kind of what they're trying to do. They're trying to regain control of the relationship. The victim was the supply of superiority for the narcissist and they want that person back in their life and they want to the narcissist also wants to do several other things usually like regain the narrative the narrative was that they were the victim and uh you let's say you left the narcissist you are actually the perpetrator and if they can bring you back they can re-establish that victim abuser paradigm uh, even though it's false. So now they can say, oh, you're, you're, you're such a problem for me. You're, you're, you're making my life so difficult. And they can feel, now they can feel good about themselves because they're not the problem. They, they gaslight themselves to make it look like you're the problem and so they can feel good about themselves. That's the game they're playing. So, and also what they're doing is trying to, you know, in that narrative, they're trying to deflect all blame for anything, ever, anywhere. That's, they're trying to deflect uh, responsibility for anything. They're not the problem. They're never the problem for anything, anywhere, at any time. It's always somebody else. And this is part of the game that they're playing with the uh, flying monkeys. And of course, this goes with the narcissist's uh, desire to have this charming public persona, right? So they're going to tell everybody, this is also laying the groundwork as well. So uh, when you leave the narcissist, one of the fears that they have um, is a fear that they would do. What does that mean? Well, the narcissist is going to spread a new propaganda campaign against you. Now, that's what they feel like they want to do. Uh, but before they do that, they're going to try and reel you back in. So they think that you think like the narcissist. The narcissist thinks everybody else is a narcissist. Everybody else is out to get them, just like they're out to get everybody else. And so before you lay down your propaganda campaign against them, they're gonna lay down their propaganda campaign against you. First, they're gonna try and reel you back in, but this flying monkey attack is basically a part of that laying down that new propaganda. And it will, make them seem like they are this great person and they've been maligned and this is a terrible thing and they're a victim of the situation and they need to be helped and you're the problem because you left and they're going to send all your friends and your family to talk some sense into you. That's how the narcissist is going to work the situation. And one of the situations, one of the red flags with flying monkeys is that the, the flying monkeys come in groups. When the narcissist chooses a new propaganda campaign, they go at it 
you know, big time. They contact everybody that has a contact with you and get them to do the bidding, the new propaganda campaign and push it towards the victim en masse. And that hopefully is hopefully for the narcissist, right? The, the narcissist is hoping that all this new gaslighting will warp your perceptions and get you back under control. So this is uh, really a traumatic situation for the victim because the narcissist is going to use people you trust, people you don't have your walls up against to stab you in the back. And the narcissist is going to give them the knife to do it. And, you know, they're basically turning your friends and family into weapons. And they target you in a co coordinated attack against you on Facebook, on phone, on, you know, social media, whatever that is, or in person. And you'll see it coming at all different angles, but it'll be the same thing. The narcissist is this this angelic thing and you're the problem and you need to stop doing whatever you're doing which is probably the same thing to do probably get those three distances right physical distance psychological distance mental distance that holy grail of physical distance when you're when you get away physically from the narcissist they start to have little panic attacks about it and if you're if you you get away they're gonna send the flying monkeys after you to stab you in the back and get you back under that physical distance in that safe zone that the narcissist likes so they can further abuse you safely um, without the public knowing how bad how badly they're abusing you so how can you protect yourself from a flying monkey attack well if you know their narcissist as soon as you break apart from the narcissist lay down your story about what happened to you to all your friends and family. You have to start that campaign before the narcissist does. The narcissist is gonna be on it as soon as they get up the next morning, I guarantee it. Um, and first knowledge rules. First knowledge rules, what does that mean? It means that the first knowledge that gets into your head about any subject is fact. We, our brains like to call it fact and any knowledge that comes in about that thing that's contrary to it, secondly, is a weak rebuttal. It was so important uh, back in history uh, with Julius Caesar. He had a special, um, he had a special propaganda campaign actually, a lot like that. And what he would do whenever something happened in the battlefield far afield. He would have a special team of envoys go back to the Senate with the fastest horses on the fastest route back to uh, the Senate as soon as possible before anybody else could get there to lay down the first narrative. The first narrative became the fact and anybody else that came afterwards had a weak rebuttal. You know, we already have the fact. This is how the brain works and this is why it's difficult, as we'll go into later, to, and why you shouldn't try to change the flying monkeys. You have to lay down the groundwork when you leave the narcissist with the first narrative because then your narrative is in place. All your friends and all your family know the deal, know what the situation is. And then when the narcissist comes to them, you know, trying to be the, oh, I'm the victim, the, they will have first knowledge of what you said and they'll be skeptical. Now, just remember, just remember that everything you say, if there's a connection between you and the narcissist and they contact those flying monkeys, everything you say will go back to the narcissist. Now, the narcissist already knows they abused you. They already know all the things that you'll tell them, okay? And they'll have some rebuttal, but first knowledge is king. So lay it down. If, you, if you're leaving the narcissist, lay it down. Let everybody know on the down low that this is what happened to you and this is a situation and you don't you know don't flourish it don't get into emotions just lay it down this is what happened to you and they'll be like oh my goodness I'm sorry to hear that and then the narcissist will will DM them or call them or whatever it is right and they'll be like oh I don't want to get into this 
you've laid down the groundwork okay not everybody does that they leave the narcissist and then the narcissist does the groundwork and then you have an uphill battle and your friends are stabbing you in the back and that might happen anyway they might be convinced like i said a lot of these flying monkeys the narcissist knows who is most uh flexible to their stories the naive people the people that don't want to believe anybody is bad those people they work with them you'll you'll still get a few flying monkeys even if you've done excellent at laying the groundwork on why you left before the narcissist did and one of the more important things about it is to trust yourself trust your accurate perception the narcissist is going to try and twist that they always have and if you've spent a lot of time with the narcissist your perception is probably already twisted just remember all the arguments remember how much you hated it all remember how much you needed sanity and how wrong it was on how they treated you that's your perception and when these flying monkeys come back into your life and tell you it all wasn't that bad or it actually even didn't happen because they'll tell you things like that or just tell you you're being too sensitive right they'll try and devalue you and devalue your experience you hang on to what you have your memory you know what happened you know why you're left you know why you're upset you know why your life isn't the way you wanted it and it's not your fault and so now you've broken it up with the narcissist that is that's honestly it's a bit of a grieving situation it's, it's, it's a fun happy situation but it's also you have to let those dreams that you had with the narcissist die so that's a bit of a grieving process but now you have flying monkeys coming at you your friends your relatives co-workers <laughs> right um neighbors people you trusted coming at you stabbing you basically stabbing you in the back now you got to grieve that too now all this nonsense and abuse is happening and you have to hold on to your perception. You have to hold on to your perception and the best way is to grieve. Go ahead, grieve, let it be, you cry, whatever you have to do, but don't question your perception of events. You're here for a reason. You got away from the narcissist for a reason and all those flying monkeys are proof that you should stay away. That campaign being run on you is proof that you should stay away and this situation it was downright evil and it still is because they wouldn't be running this propaganda campaign on you to twist your perceptions and ruin your mind and uh, honestly ruin the ruin your connection between your perceptions you have to you know because then if they can do that then the narcissist could fit in there get in between you and what you actually know to be true don't question it do not because that's the start did i really was it really that bad maybe i could go back maybe you know maybe this and maybe that or did it you know, the flying monkeys will start the questions and then you'll go over the questions and then maybe you'll get out on your own and it won't be easy and, you know maybe it wasn't that bad back with the the narcissist you know maybe it'll be don't start the maybes don't question it you got out for a reason and believe me going back ain't it it's not going to help you it's only going to hurt your life it's only going to hurt, hurt your sanity believe me i'm on the outside and it's not easy i am just staying above normal on it <laughs> right i'm just i'm i'm like uh, nissan bolt or whatever his name is just running across running ahead of the pack staying ahead of everybody it's not easy i'm running businesses i'm working at a job i'm doing everything but i would trade nothing to go back to the narcissist the narcissist situation was wrong it was evil it was abusive and i do not question it for one second and yes there are some things i loved about that situation but that doesn't take away from the fact that i never should have been abused that i should never have been verbally abused emotionally abused boundary abused no i don't do that that is a hot red line i don't that, that you don't cross that okay no never ever never ever yes 
And also the fact, the biggest red flag with all these flying monkeys and you might start wanting to question whether your perceptions are real. Hey, this all, all this information, this highly coordinated attack against you, which is what it is. It's an attack on your perception telling you that you didn't really get hurt. How dare they? That you didn't really get abused. How dare they even assume that? Okay, but anyway, it's all from the narcissist, which tells you it's BS. It's from the narcissist. Point period blank, it's over. Anything out of their mouth, whether it comes through their mouth or a flying monkey's mouth, is wrong. Period. But the next important point is not to attack the flying monkeys. I know they're stabbing you in the back. I know they're betraying you. I know they're gaslighting you. Again, after you thought you got out, you're being gaslit again by your most trusted people. People should that should have your back or at least open the door for the fact that you're the victim here and they're not. And it's all confusing and it's all it's all wrong. It's so wrong. But don't attack them back. That's what the narcissist wants because you have been betrayed as the abuser. Just tell them the facts, the unemotional facts of what you went through and the abuse that you went through, what they said, what they did, and say, you can decide for yourself. And I'm not gonna change my mind and I'm not going back. And some people don't even do that. They just tell people, I had my reasons. I'm not going into it. They kind of gray rock the, um, because the, the flying monkeys are an extension of the narcissist. So you can gray rock the flying monkeys and all that information. It'll do pretty much the same it does for the narcissist because any salacious information, any valuable information that you have, and these people are gonna be looking at your life. They're gonna be telling the narcissist everything that they see, hear, and feel about when they were with you. They are the narcissist's eyes, ears, and mouth. So don't give them any information that you don't want to give them, anything valuable. Don't tell them you made new friends. Don't tell them that you have a new job. Don't tell them that you have a new car or where you live or what your phone number is. Nothing, nothing. Because that will all be used against you. And don't try and convert the flying monkeys back to you. That will seem like a hostile act to them because of first information rule. They already have the first information. If you didn't lay the groundwork when you left the narcissist, then the narcissist left the groundwork and they have the first information in their head and that's what they hold dear to their heart. So when you say that's not it, this is this and I'm going to convince you otherwise, it is a hostile act to them. And now you're playing into the narcissist narrative. You're the bad guy, the narcissist is the good guy, and the cycle can go around and around. You don't, first of all, you don't need to convince anybody. You don't need to explain yourself to anybody. This is your life. This is your life. You don't need to explain it to these flying monkeys. Even if they were some of your cherished people in your life, dearest inner circle people, they're not anymore. Listen, I have an inner circle. It's a very few people, very few people. And if they have had ever been a flying monkey, they're automatically cut out for life, for existence. The entirety of their existence, no matter what they do afterwards, if they donate me a kidney or a heart to keep me alive, they're still not on the inner circle. Once you've been a flying monkey, it proves that you can be used for evil against me and I'm not doing that. I'm not, not in my world. So don't try and convert the flying monkeys. Uh, first information is king and everything else is a weak rebuttal. And that's how they see it. Uh, they've done studies on this. This is not something I just came up with. This is a study. They've done studies that the first information is king. And everything else is, seems like a weak rebuttal, even if it's the truth. Even if the first thing was a totally crazy lie, 
people will still believe it more than they believe the truth because the uh, truth came second. That's just how it is. That's how our brains work. It's a very unfortunate fact. But now that you know it, you can use it to your advantage instead of the narcissist using all this stuff to their advantage. And believe me, they know. So the flying monkeys did their thing. You're hurt. You're wondering where this all might go. But you didn't convince, you didn't try and convince the flying monkeys. You just told them the facts of the situation. And I would cut that down to just the bare facts, how you were abused. You know, like if you're a wife and you're being yelled at every day and you're being told you can't talk to people, tell them that. Don't tell them how you felt. Tell them the actual thing and just leave it. Leave it at that. Let them go upon their way. They may think it, whatever they have to think. But at the end of the day, they may come around to what you have said. I've seen that happen. Uh, the narcissist, let me take a drink here, is a narcissist. <laughs> They're going to burn through all these rela new relationships that they have with other people, the flying monkeys. They'll probably burn through those relationships too. And a lot of, a good percentage of the flying monkeys that I've seen have noticed at some point that the narcissist was wrong and it was all BS. Yeah, I've seen the narcissist weave some crazy stories um, about other narcissists, honestly. <laughs> uh, that is a crazy story. Um, now nah, I won't get into it. But the one narcissist, we wove this whole narrative caught the other narrative by surprise and wove a whole narrative of flying monkeys about how awful the other narrative uh, narcissist was. And he, honestly, the other narcissist was trying to be nice. But the narcissist can't be nice. They don't cherish intimacy and they don't really know what it is. And so it was sloppy and the other narcissist took advantage and both of them said that they were the victim because they're always the victim. <laughs> It was a mess, but yeah, where was I? Sometimes the uh, flying monkeys, those a lot of those flying monkeys in that situation came around and realized that the first narcissist was actually the one that started the whole thing and was wrong 100%. That didn't mean that those flying monkeys also didn't realize that the second narcissist was also, you know, the, the average person doesn't really have a vocabulary for all this. So what they'll say is this person is crazy and then she was crazy too. That, that's the C word. I call it the C word because the narcissists hate it. <laughs> you drop that C word, not the other C word. Crazy. Yeah, because it's used all the time. People don't really know what narcissism is. They don't think it's a thing. And I've actually seen people, semi-educated people, shoot down everybody that uses narcissism to describe somebody else just because it's popular it's a real thing people it is a real real thing uh, obviously a lot of you people know right I, i'm singing to the choir but yeah a lot of well, back to the track a lot of the flying monkeys can come around to see the light of day because it's not that difficult to see but you have to kind of handle the former flying monkeys when they are not the flying monkeys anymore. They may come to you and say, you know, I'm so sorry that I came to you and said that everything you felt you didn't feel and everything you said wasn't true or something like that. I'm just so sorry for it because now I can see that actually you were right. You were in the right and I shouldn't have come to you and said the things that I said will you please bring me back in as a friend? That's, this is basically what they're saying. And you have to be totally cautious around these people. You can never be as trusting with them again because they have proven to be dangerous. They've proven that they can be turned into a weapon against you. And if they can do, if it can be done once, it can probably be done twice or three times. And you don't need that. You've had enough trauma in your life, enough abuse in your life, enough people stabbing you in the back, and don't do that ever again, right? Don't bring them into your inner circle ever again. And if you kind of falter on that, remember the betrayal. 
Remember how bad it felt when your trusted friends or your trusted family or people you just didn't have, you didn't think could betray you, did. Remember that when they come back and say, I'm sorry, let me back in. No, no. No is a perfectly acceptable word for that. Maybe is also very good because it means I'm opening the door to you and you can kind of come in. You're on probation for a few decades because you're never getting back into the inner circle, but you can be an acquaintance. You can be a friend again. This is how it is. This is how I roll now after I've been with a narcissist. I'm not playing anymore. This is my life and I call the rules and I call that uh, this BS is abuse is not okay. Abuse is not something I can put up with for a while to get something. No, no, we're not doing that anymore. And there's another set of flying monkeys, the double agent flying monkey. This is a person who is honestly a friend of the narcissist and is honestly a friend of you. And they're just trying to keep both friends. They're trying to juggle, you know, it's like trying to keep both sides friendly to a nation when both sides are at war, you know. It doesn't work, but you try it. Um, and a double agent never works out well because the narcissist sees this flying monkey. The narcissist sees all its flying monkeys as pathetic losers. Yes, that's what they do. That's what the narcissist sees them as. Sees them as pathetic. That's if I, you know, narcissist is saying, if I can use them and twist them around my little finger like it's nothing, then they're totally pathetic. Just like my victim, right? They're going to go to my victim and make my victim pathetic again so that they come back to me and I can use and abuse them again. And you look at the former flying monkeys as dangerously naive because they stabbed you in the back and they didn't have two thoughts of a hesitation against it. So, yeah, that's where that stands. Double agent, look out for the double agent. They're honest to both sides, but they will betray you probably more than they betray the narcissist. So don't trust that person either. So you're out of the narcissistic relationship. You're away from the narcissist hopefully, and that's why they're sending all these flying monkeys to you, <laughs> you should start immediately, actually before you left the um, narcissist, to lay down a groundwork of a support network, a, a group of people that support you 100%. They get where you're coming from, they get your relationship, and they don't try and uh, devalue what you're saying, and they support you no matter what you say. They don't question you. They don't go, ah, oh, well, you know, you really shouldn't say that. You really, were they really a narcissist? You're not, you're not a psychiatrist. You probably shouldn't lay down that label. That one's out. That's gone, right? You have to lay down a support network. If you go into, oh, and therapy, that is excellent. That's a place where you can just air your stuff and the therapist won't judge you and will give you helpful hints to get your life back in order. Uh, your mind, your sanity back in order because your sanity is gone whether you realize it or not when you're with the, when you're with the narcissist. You'll think you're sane, but you're not. And this new support network, you should definitely, one of the things with the new support network you, you should always be is separate from the narcissist. They have no connection and have never met the narcissist. No connection whatsoever, except they breathe the same air and they live on the same planet and maybe they're in the same country, right? <laughs> they have no connection with the narcissist because once they have a connection with the narcissist, gaslighting, flying monkeys, all that, all the, the circus starts, right? And you don't need that. Your support network is for you to support you in recovery. That's what it's for. And you should tell them about your experience. Tell them where you came from, what this, what happened, that you lived with a narcissist and how bad it was. And when you lay down the story, you're going to see a lot of people that some will back away. That's fine. And some will come forward and say, oh, wow, you know, that's terrible. 
give you empathy. Some will give you empathy and some will give you distance and that's fine. Wherever that wants to be. You, you're not a narcissist. You're not going to try and pull people into you. You're not going to try and push other people. It's not about force. You're going to be you now and you're going to let your friends, your new friends and your support network know what has gone on because it's a big part of your life. Don't try and hide it and keep it secret because it is a large part of your life and you'll find out where people stand, really stand on supporting you when you air the fact that you will just got out of a relationship with a narcissist. And a couple of things this does is this, this lays the groundwork a little bit for your inner circle, right? You want a new inner circle. People have no contact with the narcissist, don't even know them, have never known them and never will know them except through you. This inner circle is the people that support you 100% have your back and they totally get you and at the situation you had with the narcissist they totally get it too there's no hedging there's no devaluing at all and it's your inner circle should probably be like two or three people max maybe four right <laughs> inner tight circle you could tell them anything and they will support you 100 percent. that's the way it's supposed to be and this is probably pretty alien to a lot of people who come out of a narcissistic relationship where they felt they had to put up with things to get things. That's a narcissist love dynamic. You have to pay for your love from the narcissist and pay you shall. And we're not doing that anymore. <laughs> and also this lays down the dynamic for first story. Now, all these people don't know the narcissist from anybody. Your story about what happened is the first story. It's permanent in their head. It is the truth as far as they're concerned. And it is the truth because you lived it. But if the narcissist ever does meet them and ever does get to them, you've already laid down the first story. You're already there. And you've already vetted and trusted this, these people, tried these people to see where they are and how close you, you can you can be with them. And so if the narcissist ever comes and meets these people, it's too late. You've already protected yourself by laying down the first narrative. So we went all through this mess, the narcissistic relationship, the abuse, the devaluing, the yelling, the screaming, the fear, the uh, hate, love, all that trauma, all that, all that, all that, like the whole sphere of negativity, honestly. Uh, you don't know where you're at. You don't know who, what's going on. You don't know why, how you can get out of this. You don't know any of it. It's so devaluing on its own. And then a the narcissist adds in devaluing on top of that. Um, and then the flying monkeys come when you get out of it. On top of all that. So now your trusted friends and family that could have supported you when you get away from the narcissist are now your worst enemies because they're devaluing you too. And they're also extensions of the narcissist carrying on the narcissistic circus well after you got away. This can be hugely devastating. It can further devastate other relationships, your marriages, your friendships, People you've known since forever can be totally wiped off your map because the narcissist got in and convinced them that you're the problem and you have to cut these people off. So I'd like to bring up one last thing on you breaking away from the narcissist. I know this is about flying monkeys and the flying monkey attack. One of the good ways to prevent this attack is that when you get away from the flying monkeys, I mean, when you get away from everybody, uh, when you get away from the narcissist, um, is to cut everybody off. I'm Italian American and we have had a tradition that you might have seen in The Godfather, right? Of um, disowning people, disowning them like they never existed. You don't have pictures of them. You don't say their name. They never existed. 
you, all the phone numbers and all the contacts of the contacts that lead back to the narcissist and all the flying monkeys, cut, 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 cut. You'll see down in the comments something called no contact. And a lot of people have found a lot of success with that. No contact with the narcissist and no contact with the flying monkeys because they're just an extension of the narcissist. And when you cut off all contacts, you can start living your life. You can get those three distances. You already got the physical distance. And now you're going to work on a psychological distance and the mental distance. You're going to stop thinking about all the things you should have done, you could have done, and all the things they did wrong, and all the arguments, and all the stuff. What your mind should be is you thinking about your life and all the great things and all the friends and family that are near and dear to you. And you might lose a lot of family in this um, narcissistic war, because that's what it is, right? You might lose, you might have to cut off your whole family. And it, that in alone is devastating to a lot of the victims. But it's better than being constantly attacked, devalued, and gaslit. It's When you get out here, and I try and say this in just all my videos, a lot of my videos, it's so much better on the other side. Don't think it's good to be in a narcissist grip. And you will be on the other side. You will be free of the narcissist. That day will come and I guarantee you, you will look back and you'll, you'll be like, oh my goodness, I was, I was, I was so far under everything. I was, I, and you'll think it, those years or decades were a waste of your life. If you could just have a time machine and, and go back in time because any time with a narcissist is basically a waste because you're just spinning, you're just spinning your wheels, arguing and trying to stay away from arguing and trying to get things back to normal. And then, you know, and it's just a loop and a loop and a loop and a loop. You're just going around in circles, more like a figure eight with the narcissist. All this love, hate, all this nonsense. Live your life. Get out here. Come on. Come out to freedom and live your life. It's, I'm not a billionaire. I'm not, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's, a, it's worth every penny out here. I'm telling you. Okay. So I hope that helps. Stay away from those flying monkeys. Look out for them when you get out because it is definitely a thing. And if you haven't liked and subscribed yet, go ahead, do it. It helps out the channel, helps get out the message. I'll see you back on the next video. Have a great day and let's live our best lives.